Yo, what it do, y'all? This your boy King Ed the Great coming at y'all with another video. Be sure to subscribe to Off the Cuff Radio and Screwball Radio. Now, with this video here, see what I like to do. I like to talk about different things other than hip hop and rap and the music business. Sometimes, sometimes I like just give it an analytical view of different TV shows I like to watch because with our show. We don't only interview rappers. We don't only interview R&B singers and musicians. We also had dating coaches on. We also had actors, actresses, producers, uh, chefs. We're pretty much diversing our range. So with this video here, I actually was watching this program today on Netflix. It goes by the name of Sex Life. And now, before I really go to the breakdown, I got to put the perfect instrumental for this here. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. So, let me tell y'all this. This is a show right here that men should watch. Because you get the perfect understanding of women nature and you won't be frustrated. And you will also recognize that money, I don't care what a lot of these red pill niggas tell you, is not going to be the be all of a happy marriage or a happy relationship. See, let me give y'all the breakdown of this entanglement going on. See, the name of the couple is Billy, that's the woman's name, and Cooper, that's the guy's name. Now, look at this here from the hindsight. You would think that Billy has it all. Happy marriage, kids, big house, money, cars. She's a housewife. But for some reason, she's unhappy. He's providing all this stuff while she's at home with the kids. But yet she's unhappy. So, sexually, the couple loses their spark. And what happens? She's unhappy sexually. She's not getting her needs fulfilled. So, what does she do? Enter Brad. The wild, adventurous, unpredictable bad boy ex that gave her the thrill of a lifetime. Her, her ex from eight years ago come back into the scene. Wanting her back. And keep in mind, you know, he has some change, too. He's a music producer. But when he was with her, oh, he was giving her everything. He knew how to cater to her emotions. He knew how to arouse her. He knew how to touch her in ways where her husband currently can't do. And big shout out to Locario said, because Locario did a video about this. He said, basically, a lot of these guys that are married to these women are basically the second option. They're settled. So going back into the into the, the series, she grows obsessed with sleeping with him. She fantasizes about him every night. She fantasizes about every wild sexcapade that they did from the train to Puerto Rico to in the bathroom to the club, the taxi. It was a wild sex life that they had. And she wants that back. Plus, her husband wasn't really paying her attention because he's occupied with kids. A career and being busy and when he's when he gets home he's not really trying to deal with that so here's the interesting part right here and this is where a lot of people should take note because i'm not going deep into the um series because i don't want to provide any spoilers but she writes in her laptop every night about her feelings about brad she wants brad back she she misses the feelings that brad gave her Making her feel sexy, making her feel turned on, making her feel like she's appreciated. See, Brad tapped in those emotions that Cooper couldn't do. But here's the interesting part about it. Cooper finds out that she's having fantasies about Brad. But see, what a lot of men would do, they will act a fool. A lot of men would probably would have shot her. Probably would have blew up, probably would have beat her up, probably would have shot the dude. But this is what he does. See, he doesn't tell her that he finds out. What he does, 
and this is a 50-50 thing that this can work. He tries to emulate the tactics to win his wife's affection back. Like, all the unpredictable sescapades and adventures that she was doing with Brad, he figured he could try to do it himself. He tried to be spontaneous, having sex with her in the boss's suite. He tried all these things, and it worked. It actually worked. It revealed that spark. But for some reason, he didn't feel like he was being himself. It kind of like frightened him. So he went back to the being the average Joe. Because basically what had happened was he was becoming somebody else. Like He didn't want to become another man. And see... That's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a bad. It's a good thing because he could have used that as a way to refulfilling that spark that was lost in their relationship. But instead, he let the jealousy get the best of him, and he didn't really do it. But he went. He didn't feel comfortable going that route. But in my personal opinion, he should have took elements of Brad and implemented it in his own style. And the way he had her back, but at the same time. He couldn't. He didn't feel comfortable being the bad boy. So here's another thing that I noticed too. That was his biggest mistake. Now, her friend Sasha. I'm gonna tell you what it is. Her friend Sasha. They are basically music industry groupies. That's all that they are. You can look at the opening scene where they sucking off musicians in the beginning of the show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But let me tell y'all this. Billy ain't nothing but a musical uh, industry jump off. That's all she was. So after the toxic relationship with Brad is over, she lucks up and finds a beta male, which would computer be Cooper. And he gives her everything, everything a woman could want. He's a quote unquote high value man. He has the suits, he has the cars, he has the career, he has the kindness. He gave her children, he gave her a foundation. But that wasn't even good enough because, see, let me tell y'all this, and this is the inside game. Brad mastered, the, he mastered it to where if he wanted her, if he wanted Billy, he could have Billy anytime he wanted. That's the Lester Diamond Mackin right there. You know, if y'all look at Casino, how every time Lester Diamond would talk to Ginger, Ginger would just tear up or feel a sort of way. She couldn't feel that way with the trick, which was Sam Rothstein, but he gave her security. And this is what a lot of these red pill niggas got to understand. You could give her security, but you can't give her thrill. Even Willie D said it best. Money can't buy you nothing but a cheap thrill. So... It even got to the point where he mastered it to where he literally smashed her best friend. And instead of her getting heartbroken and mad, she was masturbating to them having sex. So you can't tell me right there that he mastered that. But this just goes to show right here. And I just wanted y'all to look at this from a different standpoint that... Money ain't the rule of all everything when it comes to relationship. That's only a, a part of the fraction. If you had mastered the art of communication to where she could feel a sort of way when you come into the room or she feel a sort of way when she see you, smell you, touch you, it's a lost cause. Your money can't save you from that. And Jay-Z said it best. Once a good girl gone bad, she's gone forever. But... Definitely look at this, y'all. I mean, you know, I'm not going to get real deep into it. Definitely look at this for educational purposes because this is a lot of what a lot of people are going through on the fly. There are literally a lot of men, especially men in the high value community that are literally going through this right now. Like, yeah, you worked yourself off to get that dangling carrot and that still ain't working. Dudes that don't even have one third of what you have can still get your lady. Because you didn't master the art of communication and the art of seduction. So that's what it is, man. So check that joint out, man. This is King Eric sign out. Check me out tomorrow night. Check me out Monday night. We got CMG from Conscious Daughters on Sunday night. And Monday night we got Sky Zoo. So 
holla at me.